on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check, check, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my day of all going. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. We're on it. But check out our Patreon channel because that's where you're going to see all our full-length interviews before he start clipping all the clips, okay? Yeah, she just snitched on me before he start <laughs> snitching. Before clipping. he start clipping before all Before he start <laughs> clipping and all that. that you know what? I, I, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. But check it, man. Hey, man, we got a very special guest in here today, y'all. He really don't need an introduction. He's been on the show a few times now, man, ever since we started this road. And I'm always having back, man, so we can just brush up on what's going on with Mr. Lee. What's yo, going yo. on, baby? Cool and cool, man. What's going down? Man, hey, man, listen, all I can say is, man, uh, man, hey, I, I, that last, uh, I'm going to get into the music. The last time you was on here, we were talking about it a little bit. Uh, I had, I had, uh, I actually had uh, uh, Bobo, uh, I had uh, He's a Leo, and you yeah. on here. Yeah. And I had said that Silk was hard, and you said, yeah, Silk was hard. But a few people said, uh, you know, otherwise, and when I clipped it in, boy, listen, I had, because I wouldn't seen Silk right after that. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to see this man. Yeah. But I said, man, I remember we were talking about that. Let me get that and pull that back in. Now, did you see the clip? No, I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> I put it back in there. Me and you, we was pretty much like, uh, you know, he, he had he had his moments. He, exactly. he got I mean, songs with Jay Z. He had to give him his flowers, man. He he did what he did. And Jay Z, he told me Jay Z gave him that verse for free too. Oh, that's dope. The one, but how is it though working with people and seeing the way that people charge each other? I know DeRoe just was on here, and he also said he's never paid for a feature with anyone. He just, if he did, if he needed it, he asked for it. Even with P Diddy, P Diddy never charged him for that that remix. Uh, Get big, he said nobody's ever charged him for a feature. Is it the work ethic you believe that they have to push up and then get that feature, or should they buy into it, or what's the hustle? I mean, it really ain't a hustle. It's about being hot. If you hot, then you know you get favorable. But okay. if you're not. <laughs> Then you know, price the come. favors are turning to a price tag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, that's just what it is. Really, it's like a, a major artist to see a person that's hiding in that region. Of course, they're not going to charge me. They're going to want that support so they can build their fan base even more stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what, yeah. It, that's what it's, it's really about. And it's crazy because you see all these things. Like I said, Silk say Jay never charged. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of stories out there where people was like, dang. He jumped on this from Pharrell to any of those guys. Yeah. When somebody's hot, they just come in the city yeah. and they do it like a trade off. Exactly. Pretty much. And that's what it is. But when you cool off, you know, get that. Yeah, get that same right. low. Oh, no. What about people who big? I've seen this too. And I've only been in this a little while. I've seen people, I've heard of things like this. Uh, artists is hot. Next thing you know, they're not hot no more. But then the person that w when they was hot, the other person had reached out to them, and now that they coming down off their hotness, that person like ah, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm you, you get you get excluded off of that roller decks. <laughs> 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 That's what it is, you know it what I'm saying? Is. So it's like artists need to pay attention. It's nothing personal. Some people take it personal, but really, when you look at Chris Brown, other people like that, Usher. You know, they use and they see the markets and they play the market. You know what I mean? Chris Brown grabs everybody that's hot in Dallas and he's either going to do a show with them or they're on a tour and with him. And he's playing the market. He's going to play the market continuously. Drake is real precise about that too. Yeah. So you got to really pay attention to the market in order to keep your longevity. And a lot of people don't understand that dynamic of the game. That's real relationships. Yeah. So if you meet a person, because I've learned in podcasting, right, I like organic like me and your relationship mm -hmm. i pick up the phone call you i know it's genuine it's nothing no strings attached we just right. cool we met up like this just some brothers who understand hey man okay yeah you this okay and you give me a shot i give you a shot and we give each other a shot at friendship yeah and relationship building and it's imp how important is it to go in the right way it's very important because if you don't go in the right way then it don't last that's right you know i've had arguments with some of the artists that i'm extremely close with and I shared it with them that if this relationship that you have is not organic, it's only monetary. So if you fail or you don't meet that marker, then 
when it's all over and the dust settles, the phone numbers are going to change. The access is going to change. There's not going to be no let's go in the studio and vibe. None of that. You know what I mean? Because you're not an asset to them anymore. So you have to be real careful how you form relationships and how you render yourself to people expecting them to render themselves the same way you're doing that. It's not going to work that way. Wow. I, I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was waiting on it. No, I wanted to ask you, because the last time when you were on the show, you were talking about the release. You hadn't put out your instrumental album mm -hmm. at that time yet, but I know it's out now. Yes. How is it going? It's going really good. And I guess I could just say this on Boss Talk show first. Yes, sir. My idea with that, I wanted to put it out to see how, how it would do, and it's doing good. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to disclose that my idea for these instrumental albums is to give people a chance to rap on my music. So if you want to rap on those tracks, all you have to do is go to iTunes and pay for the track. It's going to be $1.99. Pay for it. Show proof of payment, and you can use the track. It's mm. non-exclusive, and, and that's all you have to do. Wow. And I'm going to be doing this, doing uh, two albums a month. So it'll be, oh, that's dope. It'll be like 20 tracks a month mm -hmm. that people get to pick from and go to iTunes. And if they want to put a record out with one of the tracks, they can do it. That's cool. I like that yeah. idea. Yeah. That's wow, dope. you know, you you gotta understand, man. Um, you 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 don't understand how God is using you sometimes when you you gotta be in the spirit to understand. And I don't know, you know, a lot of people trip off me because I'm real spiritual. Yeah. I, I love God. I don't try to hide it. You gotta take step me like that. You can call me a hypocrite later. I don't care. But I'm gonna show that I never deny him in in front of nobody. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> and you grew up young dealing yeah. with you know understanding the path that your parents and everybody was on, my, my Aunt Hattie, you know, you've seen these people that really meant a lot to you, really, you know, loving and living life for God, you know what I mean? Right. And I look at you and I thank God for you because I look at you and you went through the, you know, Nip Nipsey Hussle, he passed away, you were recording with him when he passes away, Pimp C the same thing, you had the opportunity to work with him, and I'm probably missing somebody, I don't yeah, even know. Big Hulk. Big Hulk. You know yeah, I, mean? I recorded of. him, he was, I was the last person to be in the studio with him before he passed away. Wow. You know what I'm saying, like, he left my studio and I, never, I didn't work in it for months. Wow. He left that night and hours later he was dead. Man, I didn't even know that. So how was Big Hog as a person? I never have, because I had never brought him up on the show. This would be the first time man. I really just brought him up and talked about him. Like, I listened to, um, uh, was it, I'm chilling with my brother, yeah. and you already know. Yep. that You know, I'm Texas, so yeah. I'm going to know the songs. Yeah. But how was he as a person in that studio? A real cool dude, man. He was like a big teddy bear, really. Really? <laughs> yeah. The Gemma Giant. Real cool fella, bro. Genuine, everything he said, his conversations were all always genuine. So, so he was uh, Fat Pat's brother. Yeah. And so, when you when you would deal with him, um, he was he wasn't he wasn't in no street, none nah, of that. No. Nah. Because I'm hearing that they mistaked him for not, somebody else. Not when I was dealing with him, I never. No, you know, I he was a, man. The man left my house because he was like, look, I got to. It's time for me to get. I got to get out of here because I got to. You know, get my kids a bath and get them ready for bed. Wow. He was that type of dude, man. So, you know, like, nah, he wasn't like that. So, you hear that, like, hours later that he gets, you know, like I said, I heard it was a mistake. Somebody, they thought it was somebody else or something. That's what I heard through the grapevine. But anyway, you, once you hear it, what are, you, what are your thoughts? I didn't believe it. I called his phone a million times. Yeah. I just to. didn't want to believe it. You know what I'm saying? So, I was, it was, it's crazy when you have a person that, we our last conversation was like, man, I'm so happy we're working together. I was like, me too, man. We're gonna do some big things, yada yada yada. We hugged each other and you know dapped each other up. And you know, I'm thinking, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna see you tomorrow, and we're gonna go back to work. And it, it, it never happened. Wow. And, and here's the reason I asked you that, leading up to that question about a big hog or or pimp C or, or or Nipsey is because there's younger guys now mm -hmm. that are producing that are facing some of the same issues. I just did, uh, uh, what's it, Heartbeats the other night, and he lost J.D. Young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean, after he was working with him. Could it be that God sometimes lets you go through these things because other people that you may know may go through some things that you already have done, dealt with, and you'll be able to give them some encouraging words? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it can be that way, but you know, we live in a, in in a in a in a world where we have 
the freedom to make our own decisions. Correct. So you know, God does have an intervention in some of the things that we do, but some of the a lot of the, the things that we go through are because of the d- decisions that we make. Correct. I agree you know with that. I mean? so I agree it's with like, that. It, it's, it's just a tough situation all the way because I don't think that people really realize when you're working with a person in the music industry, especially if you coming from the bottom together, it's a family. So when you lose that person, you're not only losing a family member, but all of the work and everything that you've been putting in has been destroyed. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and sometimes the media family don't understand that part. Right. Like when a person like a rap group member loses their member, it's that they're devastated. It's a lot of things that's going on, a lot of different dynamics. So I think that um, it's it's awful situation to be in, man. When I when I when Nip got killed, it was it was awful. It hurt. I didn't really get to grieve the way I wanted to. I didn't get to say goodbye to him the way I wanted to. All of these things got. I didn't have access to him because wow. I didn't have we didn't have the same blood. But that's my nephew. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. And I don't think a lot of people understand the hardship that you go through when you don't get the proper closure from people like that. And then too, if you're doing work with them and you're trying to finish things and you're getting interference because people don't understand why you're really doing what you're doing. You know, everybody gets into the money grab thing or, oh, I don't want you doing this, don't do that. We're the family, don't, you know what I mean? But it's it's, it's a family outside of them lines. Mm-hmm. You know but what can I mean? you blame them sometimes because, you know, in and you should know this being an entertainment business, you have a lot of people who, under false pretense, that make it harder for the ones who really have a true heart that want to do no, right. No, doubt. But that's But you have to do the due diligence enough to figure out who they are. The thing I was asking yeah. was like, and and I I kind of answered my own question like with you going through it, and, and it does help the other people. The reason I say it helps that you've already been through yes. it. Just like when I interviewed Heartbeats, I brought your name up. Now that I think about it, mm-hmm. and I was like, because sometimes it's hard dealing with certain situations after the person's passed on, or right. I might have just brought the situation up because of what me and you discussed yeah. about just sometimes how confrontational it can be trying to get projects processed after that. Mm-hmm. And I asked him and I was like, how tough was it? And he said he just deal with the record label. And you remember me talking to him about that? Mm-hmm. So it was basically trying to understand how difficult it's been for him to get projects processed when they have so much music in his database because right. he worked with him and mostly only him. Yeah. I mean, it's you definitely have an experience of it is, you know I mean? It's something that you really can uh, build from. You know, I've been through it so many times, I understand it now, you know what I mean? And I talk to people about it all the time. That's why I wrote a book, because I wanted people to understand the dynamics of what you're doing. So I can give them the business, Mm -hmm. the biz? You got to give them the biz. biz. If you don't do business with a person, along with being a family member, whatever it is that you're doing, and having love for a person, and something happened to them, and you've invested money into a project or time or whatever it is, and you don't have the proper paperwork to cover yourself, to protect you, you're going to lose. As you talk about the book, um, how long has the book been out now? Uh, It's been out since March. How has it been going? I've sold right at about 1,800 copies. Oh, that's that's good. So, and I'm self-published, so mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm really pleased with that. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. So when is the next one coming out? You know, we always I have ahead. another one called No Spotlights that, I'm get, that it's in, uh, in the stage of getting, getting ready to be uh, printed out. What's that about? It's about my personal travels through the music business and the things that I had to go through and being behind the scenes and all of that. And why the name No Spotlight? Because I feel like I've never been in the spotlight. I've been, I'm this guy that has millions of records sold on his name, but I've never been in the spotlight. But at the same time, I posted something on my threads the other day. I said, do you prefer to have um, fame or wealth? Wealth. And everybody say wealth, but at the same time, the question was, in the entertainment industry, is it possible to have one without the other? And in my mind, let me answer that question on my perspective and you tell me what you think. My perspective of that is the only way to have wealth without the fame is in certain fields within yeah. entertainment like what you have. Yes. You understand what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you can get the wealth doing what you do, but like you say, you're not, 
no spotlight. And sometimes you might feel like you want a spotlight because you want the recognition, you want to shine, but with that come other things that you might not want to. Right. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, what is your point of view on that? I don't want the spotlight. <laughs> 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 I think me not having a spotlight has, has nourished my career to keep it where I can continue to reinvent myself mm -hmm. and be fresh to everybody because people look at me like, Oh, that's Mr. Lee. That's the guy that did this. Man, you raised me on your music. Oh, my God. This, you know, because they don't see me all the time. But it's only a few know that if they yes. do the research. Because right. when growing up listening to music, I'm listening to the music. I'm hearing the artist. I'm seeing the artist. I don't really care about who made the beat unless or, or anything else behind the scene. All I care about is music. Yeah. You understand? Which I would think majority of people like that unless you're just into the music. You're like, ooh, that's a dope beat. That's a dope. Let me see who made that. Right. You know what I mean? So. It's weird that way. You know, I found out the hard way. I was, when I posted my instrumental album on YouTube, and I was doing some decent numbers, like a couple of hundred here, a couple of hundred there. That's what I normally do. So I started video recording my golf games, and I started doing shorts on them. And the first time I posted one, it was like 5,000 views. Yeah, because people love and golf. Like, I told my wife, I said, this is some bullshit. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, man, I post my album on here, and I got probably about two or 3,000 on all of the tracks combined, and I post a 10-second <laughs> clip of me <laughs> dropping a ball in the, in the putt, and I got 5,000 yeah, views. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's because shorts driven too. Yeah, though. that too. Well, I, I did shorts short with the music. Oh, with too. the music yeah. too. Uh, man, damn. I got five, it's just bro. The five views. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't been there. As long as like, they organic, you know, as long as they organic, I got five people that I can five, work with. Bro. And so I'm that, like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, dude. So how many more did you drop after that? Because that should have been, been motivation them, been to be dropping them golf ones after that. Yeah, I've been dropping. Are you been getting the views? still? All dropping the music with the golf one. Yeah, put the music behind it. I started doing that. That's it. But when I first did it, it was like, they was like, nah, it didn't do anything. And then I went back to just raw video, 2,000, 3,000, 7,000. I'm like, what? Oh, okay, so the raw video is yeah. better than the ones with the music behind it. Wow. I, I think I think it works a little different for everybody. Yeah, you it have does. to find out what you what works for it you. Does. Because what I think, I think the golf, it, it touches so much more of a wider audience, whereas um, multicultural, because somebody who play golf might not like that type of music yeah. and so forth, Why, you know what I mean? But they're very interested in what you have to say about golf or techniques or you know whatever. I haven't even started talking on the videos yet. It's just me hitting the drive mm -hmm. button. Yeah, I ain't even started talking on them yet, and I'm still. As you're talking about yeah. golf, um, you've been playing golf how long? I've been playing it seriously for about five years. Five years. Yeah. And with doing that, you've improved a lot. A whole lot. But what is your weakness? Is my weakness is I have not had a complete game to where I can hit all of my clubs together. Either I'm going to have a good day with my driver or a bad day with my irons or sometimes my long irons don't be good. Mm. So it's, it's prohibiting me from pouring the court. I went from 100 averaging 100, maybe 110 in my scoring, mm -hmm. to now low 90s to mid 80s. I'm Like, I'm shooting like an average of 84 right now. So so in, sorry, hold on. In, but in Dallas, because you play a lot. Yes. Um, and you come across a lot of different golfers. Mm -hmm. In Dallas, who would you say is the best male? That you've had to play. Not even just had to play, but um, seen. Has, even question. if you've seen them I haven't play. seen them yet. No, seeing them play or play, oh, so you're the best. This is the I mean, this is when the it comes to me, I, you know, I've, I've played with some people that, that beat me. i play with some older people that beat me. Let, let I learned from it, but I, when I look at, like, entertainers around, Khaled, stuff like that, I can, I can, I can get with Khaled on a golf game. Let me ask you this, sure. because I'm not worried about Khaled. <laughs> <laughs> I've I seen you, when you first came in there, you, you said that you, 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 you be taking Brad Jordan to, 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 the, to, the, to the whatever. Can he play better than you? Or oh, you? yes, indeed. So you can't beat him. That's my sense. Not man. yet. I'm going to put it on video. Brad is Oh, dang. I thought you were going to give oh, him a no. challenge. Man, Brad something. really was the person that inspired me to learn how to play the game the right way. Really? The right way. The right way. So he took, me out, he took me to a golf course, and he saw my swing. We were playing a game. He stopped the game and took me to the range. Really? And really? he told me, look, man, you need to pull your club back this way. Stop doing this. I was doing a whole bunch of improper things. And he told me, he's like, dude, the worst thing that you can ever do in anything that you're doing is, is to not do it right and not form. learn how to do it. 
So when mm. you self self teaching yourself some things, some people are good at say it. Say that again. Hold on. Say that again. I like that quote. Say that again. One when more you try to when you're doing something, it's best to learn what you're doing before you try to start doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I so agree with that. He he explained that to me, and that's the reason that my golf game is so much better than it used to be. And I, that's why I said I'm seriously playing it for five years because he made me learn how to 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 uh, play the game the right way. And then I I learned from this guy on YouTube named Paul Wilson okay. has a, has the body swing. Mm -hmm. He's a like a YouTube mentor for me. So I that that's that who that's who learned really taught me to learn how to feel things and different stuff like that. So, you know, golfing is like something that you have to continue to study every day. And you have to practice all the time. Is he hitting 60s and 61s and 62s? Brad, yeah. I ain't seen him do it, but I'm not, I'm, I am I wouldn't doubt that he can. I mean, the dude had a whole special done on him by the Callaway. Wow. Callaway sponsored him and made custom clubs for him. What's but his weakness? I ain't seen <laughs> it. I ain't really seen it. I hear wow. Tony Romo, uh, no, but Cowboys uh, mm -hmm. quarterback, ex they say he can play that. He, they say he's good in golf. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure he is. <laughs> Steve Curry is too. Oh, yeah? yeah. Is golf Stephen like Curry the game good. that like everybody, like it seems like every sportsman, no matter what career you're in, like all the basketballers, all the footballers, everybody always end up going to golf as a, what should I say, a relaxation sport. Yeah. Why is that so? Because it make you think. When you get on the golf course, everything else is is out of your mind. Golf like is fishing. like a like a like fishing, like an athletic chess game. Mm. But how how much does it take out of your body to do this sport? Is it very tiring? Yes. Because all you, you walk in the course, or most of them be riding the yeah, golf you're riding, course, but you swing in you swing in at least three to four times or more. So the average hole per gonna, hole per hole your average hole you're going to do about four to five swings mm -hmm. if you're average. Mm -hmm. So you do that times eighteen. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. You you calling your body back. You swinging. What time do you start and what time do you? Yeah, finish? I was about to say. Uh, either I'm going to go early in the morning, like at six thirty, or I'm going to do a five thirty tea time and play in the evening when the sun is kind of going down. Do anybody be out there crazy enough to be out there during the midday in the hot? No. <laughs> me? It'd be 100 degree weather. I've you tell me you'd be out there? I love it that much I'd be out there. You crazy. You pass out. I was out there two days ago at the range and it was like 106. Ooh. And I almost died out there but I, I, I hit every ball. I didn't leave. <laughs> I'm going to take you back to the music a little bit. Um, Tupac. Mm-hmm. I never asked you about producing for Tupac. So what did you produce for Tupac? I did a song called Black Jesus. Okay. And mm. uh, it's a weird story about that record. I went to LA to do it and at that time, you know, they had reels and wasn't no Pro Tools and none of that kind of shit. So, man, I get there and I'm waiting on them to bring the reels, the security to bring the reels in. So I'm just making a beat on a Kurzweil keyboard. I'm just making the beat, and I made the beat, finished it up, and then it came. So I went into the control room with the keyboard, hooked it up, and they brought the stuff in, and the guy synced the uh, vocals up on the board and all of that. And the beat that I made linked up and locked up to that song. <laughs> like Perfectly. Was, like wow. I had the vocals, bro. Like you knew. It freaked me out. Wow. The and key, the speed, everything was perfect. Has that ever happened to you never. before? And even since then, it has it, not. It's, I've never had that. It freaked me out. Everybody was freaked out. It's like, man, what is going on here? It's predestined. So you got to work with him? Was he, that after he, after was, he passed mm -hmm. away. After he passed away. Yeah. So you think, well, you know, hey, you never know what caused that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's weird. You know what I mean? But so, I, Did you enjoy it? it? Oh, yeah, I did. You know what He I mean? might have been over a, your shoulder tapping yeah, on you. Yeah, it was a special moment. It was a special me. moment, yeah, man. For sure. So... How, you talked about getting your, your your paperwork right on on just on just when you're working with artists, man. Like, break it down to me. Like, what's a fair exchange is half for the publishing, half, I mean, half for the producer. Half, how does that world work, man? I mean, it works like any other world. It's a, <laughs> it's a negotiation. So it's like you don't have to go with half for no, nothing. You don't have to do any of that. You negotiate a price. If a person agrees to it, then that's the term. Can I buy a B straight off from you? Like, I don't want you to be attached to it no more. I don't want you to call me no more. When I buy this beat, this is what you're getting. And don't. And, and this is why I'm going to have to have the paperwork to say it, yeah, too. Yeah. You can do it. 
and ain't nothing you can do about it. Ain't and it can blow up and do like, yeah. do you I know mean, anybody that had this yes, issue? But it's the, o, the OT Genesis. Yeah. He had a guy, I think the guy had uh, sold him a track, the track that he had hit on for like two fifty, five hundred. Which one? Uh, I forgot what coke, it was. Uh, coke I think it was that. I'm in love with yeah. the Coke. Coke. It was one of them. One of them big boys. Bro. And then he sold all the rights and that's that's all he got. And that song blew up. So so that nigga over there happy, OT. He yeah. got all the rights he to that. He got the rights there, he owned the whole thing. Ooh. So how hard would it be for me to get you to give me a beat straight up? Real hard. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what I'm saying? Because Real real hard. No. Like, you would have to get it just started at like fifty. I'm gonna have to have fifty to even talk to you yeah, about you know, getting it. It's that. gonna start at fifty. Because you know it can go crazy. Yeah. You can't take it you can't take it for granted. You know what I mean? I look at making tracks in my old age like stock. Yeah. It could be a penny stock or whatever it is, but if I continue to do it do it multiple times, all of that end up compiling to a big chunk of money. So I'm just not gonna just give you the right stuff. I don't care if you sell two copies, I want my portion of that. <laughs> What's the most expensive you ever heard of anybody charging for a beat? Millions. Oh, millions. Depends on who you are. I think the highest I ever charged was like 60. 60? Yeah. But millions from who? Like Pharrell. He I'm, charged I've, millions? I've heard that he's, he's charged a person 1.5 before. And they paid it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. After all the work you did with Rap A Lot during that whole stage, I know you and Scarface still rock. You and Jay Prince, all y'all still, like, yeah. you, if you see him, it's like everything love. Because yes, these are unheard of situations. Because you hear people say, man, most of the people, when they get through with a situation, a lot of them don't ever go back and talk to certain people. They break up. It's just a big, you know, hoopla. You know I'm telling the yeah, truth. Yeah. Like, how do you, how did you guys figure it out? I mean, Rap A Lot raised me in the game. You know, Big Chief is like my... Industry dad, that's that's what I, that's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? When you got genuine love for a person, I don't care what you go through through with or what type of disagreements you have. If it's real, then you internally work through that and you keep that friendship and that bond together. Mm -hmm. And that's what I have with Rebel Life. Everybody at Rebel Life, you know what I mean? I got love for them. They got love for me, and it's just been that way, and it's going to stay that way forever. You know what I mean? Just When you have genuine people like that, that's just, that just how it is. I wouldn't be who I am without Rebel Life. Without Jay Prince, without Big Chief, I wouldn't be where I'm at. And I always remember that. I don't care if I don't talk to him every day or whatever it is, that's the fact. Wow. It, it, how, how much does it, like, when you think about the young dudes that come on here, or either like when he's Leo's on here and they see you and they be just like, man, they, they respect you so much. I talked to B Dunn and, and G Luck, same thing, man. They told me about that that beat that you done on that uh doom 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 hey behind five percent ten yeah they was they, they said they had that one in the bag yeah they thought they did yeah and because because <laughs> what's the what, what what's slim brother name uh rayface rayface bro he say man y'all you know what i'm saying uh mr lee just sent us one in <laughs> he say they heard it in that other room man they say they knew they didn't have it no more yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i got a lot of love for them man you know i watched them boys become men, you know what I mean, in, in, in the industry and doing what they're doing. I'm so proud of them. Yeah, that's yeah. funny because they, they're the same way about you. They yeah. respect you the utmost. They, he the OG, man. He really, he really, really, you know, should, we learned a lot from him just by watching yeah. him is what they, kind of how they explained yeah. it to me. And I think that's noble for them to even be, because I tell people all the time, Mr. Lee, like, you can tell somebody everything you want to tell them, but the way you walk in front of them is so much more powerful. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that, that, that Houston sound, man, when you look at the phases of it, you caused a lot of that, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, not to be on the cocky side, but I, you know, I'm pretty much the sound of that. It's a lot of people that had had something to do with it and they put the input in it. But when you're talking about the chunk of history in Houston music, you know it's what I mean? Hands down, you really can't, you can't, can't, you can't <laughs> walk around me with that. You know what I mean? If some may disagree. But all I got to tell him is like pull pull them discographies up and let's go run through them and see. You know what I'm saying? Oh, what it is? Pull up let's receipts. look at the sound. Let's look at how how the trend spread. Who who who's trend spread it? You know what I mean? Let's look at all of that. My sound has been influential all over the world, not just in the United States, everywhere. 
it, it had to be impressive for you to see the other guys that came behind you, though, like the DJ Choses, the the Beat Kings, mm -hmm. uh, all of these different guys that 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 they they look at what you done to G Lux and be done. It's like, but which one really like you tripped out the most when you heard them? When you heard them, you heard they sound come out of Houston, and you was like, man, which beat? Which beat maker? Honestly, I I would have to say like Sapphire. Okay, okay, because he. He's quiet, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But he has a uh, crazy sound, and he, he has a powerful hold with his sound. <laughs> really? Know, but he a lot, he's kind of like me. A lot of people don't really know who he is like that. But yeah. His music and his accolades scream. Speak for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You going to hear him. Yeah, you going to hear him all day. All day long. Yes, sir. So I talked to DJ Chose. I talked to... Uh, was heartbeats the other day. Were, were there ever moments like these guys explained to me about being in the studio and there being artists that are in the in the streets heavy, and now you got to come in and work with them, and you you working with them, and you don't know if it's safe a safe environment to be working in at the time that it's going down. Nah, I ain't never run into that. These guys is going through that a lot now. Nah, I mean, if I don't feel safe, I ain't showing up. Well, when I say they don't feel safe, because cause he say he felt like, I mean, Harvey say he was cool with it, but chose up actually with, with the Fredo, I think it was Fredo Bang, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Like, he's like, man, it was, it's, you know, you feel a funny feeling like, you know, you don't know, because it'd be a lot going I mean, on, the, Mr. The, Lee. The, the closest person I kind of had that encounter with was Kevin Gates. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> really? what if, I, if I'm going to say that, Kevin Gates was like, Kevin Gates is a real blunt person. Okay, okay. I don't care. He's the most loving guy there is, but he's gonna tell you exactly what he was on his mind. But that's good. You that's kind of like so he, me. So he'd be like, "It was a guy recording him or whatever," and he was like, "Man, cut that computer off, man. I'm in it. Cut that camera off, man. I'm in it trying to get this verse together for this this dude, man. And you recording and, and doing all this, cut it off." He just, he wanted to be a certain way, and he yeah, gonna make show. Sure. He man, he just. Let it let it hang right in there. He, he so, didn't sugarcoat it at all, dude. He, he just went like straight into it. Like, man, cut that shit off, man. I'm trying to do this verse for this dude and focus on this to give him the best quality I can give him. You got the goddamn camera on, cut it off. So he didn't like the camera being on. Oh, he didn't like it on. So, and he just gonna tell you whatever he, is. He told him, bro. He, he, and, and so if he don't like a beat, or that, he was cool with your beats. Yeah. But if it's something he don't like, you know he would have told you. Oh yeah, the Louisiana people blunt like that. Birdman was like that. <laughs> I love Birdman. Birdman was like that. When I first got in the studio with Birdman and Manny and all of them, I had a beat going. We was doing the realest niggas down south compilation with Rap a Lot. So I had worked on the beat before they got there. Wayne, everybody came. When they got in that studio and, they, and I had that beat playing, they was going crazy. Oh man, man, man. And then after I cut it off, Birdman was like, man, that beat jamming. Jamming, man, but we got our own people. We rapping on our own people shit. We ain't rapping on that. <laughs> oh, so he was blunt man, with he, you. He had just gave me one of his CDs. I went in the next room and threw that shit in the trash. You man. I was hot. <laughs> yeah, cause that's your, cause you call, cause it's tough, man, when you come at, when you working on something, cause it was supposed to be something y'all worked yeah, on together. I was hot, but he pulled me to the side afterwards and he was like, look, man, I'm not, I don't want to come off like, I don't want to fuck with you or nothing like that. I just got to look after my people first. Correct. He said, ain't no disrespect to you and none of that. And when he, we talked about it, I understood where he was so coming So what from. was it just a loyalty factor? Like he loyal to the people the, that the, he rocking with? The loyalty factor and also putting his people in position to get paid off of everything that they work. Oh, with. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, some people, a lot of artists make the mistakes of getting into situations and then they run off and they, they, they plant all of their money in hands that are not gonna cultivate it back to them. That's real. And I hope whoever watches this video understand what I'm telling you. Stop getting in deals and taking your money to people that's not gonna cultivate it back into you. That's real. When you look at Manny Fresh, all that work he did with with the bird cash man and all money. cash money, he's he's reaping benefits from that because he, he has so much publishing, his catalog is so big. He's getting paid off of it. Wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. Just cause, cause you hear all of these bad stories about Birdman. I'm a big Birdman fan, bro. But you hear these bad stories, right? Like he ain't pay this one, he ain't pay that one. Is it him or is it, cause if it's publishing, like you just said, and you know your business, you gonna go into it in a way to where you're not gonna accept anything. Am I right? I mean, the, the easiest thing to do is to blame somebody else. 
You can't. I ain't gonna never see him say Birdman ain't do no bad business. I don't know what he done. Yeah, but I do know that you can be naive and sign paperwork. That will put you in a position not to monetize the way you should. Okay. Okay. But then everybody likes to use the internet to blame the other person and paint this picture that this person messed over you. But if you signed and agreed to give a person your publisher, you signed and agreed to not get any money to all of the money that was spent on you has been recouped or whatever the situation is, you made that decision and you agreed with those terms. So it's, it's really naive. On both sides, it's naive to get into business and not understand what you're doing. And it's naive to complain about something that you committed to. That's real. That's so real. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, like I said, when you think about it, you say he came in to the studio and he knew. It's really like knowing the hustle. I'm a hustler. Yeah. So I'm looking like he knew the hustle. Yeah. He knew when he came in what the business was. Mm -hmm. And that's what made him say what he said to you. Exactly. You got to know the... So you respected him more for knowing the business yeah. at the end. But, at the end but in the moment... I was high. <laughs> I was like, this right <laughs> motherfucker. Man, I was high. In know? the moment, you man. was like, hell no. Yeah, man, I was high, bro, but he taught me something. You know what I mean? I learned a lot from Jay Prince, too. Jay Prince is another person that sometimes get a bad rep and a rap about what he do in his business. You know, Jay could be friends with you, but when it's time to do business... That other hat coming off and the other one coming on. And it's going to be business. And it's up to you to understand the business to get what you want out of it, too. And I was able to learn that from him. And that's why I am one of the most successful people to come out of rap a lot. Because I understand what I was doing and what I wanted and what I was giving away, what I was receiving. I understood that. You know what I'm saying? So I learned all of that watching them. But a lot of people, oh, man... Jay messed on me, he did this, he did that. I don't know, man. Oh, man, this and that happened. But I if you sign them contracts and you agree to them terms, and if a, if a person has a check right here and they say, they go to practice, they've been and say, look, I got a check right here, it goes to the contract. You can get this check today, right now, this second. I got to do is sign this contract. You, being Mr. Smart Guy, you get the contract and read it yourself for 15 seconds and say, okay, it's good. Sign it and grab that check. You did that. Damn right you did. But, it, but the, 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 the smart thing to do is say, look, let me get an attorney. I'll get back to you. Let me read over this, make sure the terms are what I'm looking for. And I'll come back and sign in and we can do the business. That's how it's supposed to be. Well, let me ask you this. And, and, and you, well, when I, t I talk to Birdman and, and, and he say, it's funny you say that because he, he say that's how he learned the game from j watching Jay Prince, mm -hmm. from watching uh, even Master P even gave him kudos. Yeah. And I just that this was like a couple of weeks ago. So I'm I'm like I could see how you could say that because you really just saying what he said in mm -hmm. in, a, in in a in a roundabout way. Right. To be honest with you, that right. he basically knew to be and as you saying Jay when he put that hat on, Jay yes, Prince right. ain't, he gonna know yeah, what he got business. going and he ain't trying to hear yeah. nothing else but what he what he feel business should be exactly. And if you, you not, can't blame if you're that. not smart enough to negotiate and learn the art of negotiating, then you're gonna lose <laughs> you're gonna lose the edge. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be mad when you get the edge away, though. That's real. Ain't nobody making you give it away. So, after you had worked with Jay Prince, working with Slim Thug, and them next, right? Mm -hmm. For all those, all the times you guys did what you done. How much did you take from the rap a lot situation into the 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 what was the name of the, what what they called it? I know it's Boss Hog, but Outlaws. What, yeah. But that's what they called it. Yeah, Boss Hog Outlaws. Like, well, how much did you take into that whole relationship? I knew the importance of ownership. Okay. I knew the importance of making sure I had my publishing and investing in my time and efforts into things and positioning myself to get paid. How did you convey that information over to uh, Rayface or, or, or say Slim Neal? I just, when it's time to do business, we, we did business. You it see was, what I'm saying? It was, like, never, it was never a point in time where me and Rayface did most, most of the business. It was never a point in time where Rayface would tell me Man, come on, man. We we family, man. Let me get this for this. He didn't, he never jewed me down. Okay, you know, but he already knew that when I came in. At the time when I was working with Slim, I was getting twenty five thousand a track. Okay, I was charging him five hundred. Mm. Wow. So you showed. You know love. what I mean? So my interest and in my position to invest my time and my career into him, I let him know by those prices that I I wanted to do it. Wow. But when the when the deal came, 
you know what I mean? My prices went from the five hundred to the ten thousand. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I, I still gave him a break, but it, but you know what I mean we was getting like ten tracks at ten thousand dollars a piece. So when the rewards came, everybody reaped for them. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna say that it was easy and it was just super smooth, because it wasn't. You know what I mean? But you know, when you go through those things, you have to those challenges come up. When you think about the leadership, mm -hmm. the Jay Princes, the Jay Z's, mm -hmm. the Birdman's, the hey, it's a bunch of it's, it's a, the Puffs, P Diddy, P Diddy. When you look at it from an outside standing in or outside looking in, do you look at them all like when you look at how they treated the individuals in the situations that they was in? Do they they kind of mirror each other, bro? To me, yeah, they do. It ain't like it's no big difference. No, not really. You understand what I'm saying? Because you looking at a label, you're looking at a, a position, and you're looking at people that's coming into a position. Yeah. Because all of them started young. I keep mm -hmm. telling people that. All of them started young. When you look at a young person starting off trying to understand, they're learning too. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you look at it. Master P, they learning too. At yeah. priority, they learning. Everybody's learning. And that's the part where I, I give everybody slack, you know, like yeah. everybody was learning, bro. You got to continue to learn. I, I mean, the problem is people have, have the, 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 the turkey thrown out the back of the truck mentality. They don't want to know how to go get the turkey. They want you to throw the turkey to them. So when you stop, when you don't throw the turkey, then you're the villain. And wow. that's why a lot of these relationships end and they don't flourish the way they should because when it's time to get into a corporate mindset, a lot of people don't want that. They want the personal mindset. They want the fish in the bucket, not the, the pole and the bait yeah. to go get their own fish. You know, so when, when those things collide, then you get all of these stories about, man, give me my publishing bag. You took this from me, you did this to me, but you signed that paperwork though. Yeah. I, I, I knew when I was at the height of my career, and it was a major artist, I'm not gonna say the name, because I don't wanna put nobody's business out, but I was working on Scarface work, and it was another big, huge artist working in the same studio with us, and I befriended the producers. And at that time, I was making like $100,000 a project at, with rap -A -Lot. And at that time, too, people were like, oh, rap -A -Lot don't pay you, they don't do this. Uh, whatever you say, I'm getting my money. And I had a conversation with these producers that were working on projects that were 100 times bigger than mine, and they were making $40,000 a year. Wow. And a big label that had a big light on them. You know what I mean? But it just goes to show you about that business. Yeah. And what you are agreeing to. Yeah. They agreed to do $40,000 a year. But then when you run into a person like me, it's a bad situation. You know what I mean? Because you're looking at it like, man, I'm getting messed over. No. You chose the real simple agreement. You and you you know what I mean you chose to work underneath those terms. Yeah, and, and, and that's something that it's something that you gotta understand. The business is business. Yeah. It go right back to that. Yep. Business is business. Um like what when you look at just like I, I told somebody this the other day and they didn't they didn't really want to ride with it, but I said, you know, when you look at the South, I'd have people to call me and they say, I'm for the move to the South. But I got my situation set up. I had this really to happen. I got my situation set up. I got songs with Rick Ross. I got songs with blah, 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 blah. I got songs with everybody. Why I, click, I got all I need. I just want to be with the right people to get the right look. And the only person that I could tell them in the South, newer, was Carl Crawford 1501. Yeah. I'm being real. That's the only thing that people look at as a label in the South. Yeah. Am I, am I offset? Oh. In Texas. In Texas, cause yeah. they were moving to Texas. Mm -hmm. I was only, oh, yeah. You're right. I mean, yeah, I don't let anybody else just put that kind of money. There ain't yeah. nothing yeah. that that I could show you that's gonna prop. Now, if you got the prop, now when you go in and make the business deal, that ain't got nothing to do with. No. You got to have your ducks in a row yeah. to say this is what you're gonna do. But as far as the South, when it come down to the area, if you come into Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, or uh, wherever, Austin. It's gonna be fifteen oh one unless yeah. you know something I don't know. Nah, I mean they're at the top of the chain right now. So I ain't no, I ain't no. I don't see anything else. That's what I said. Why is that? Yeah, because people don't want to invest that money. Carl got enough money to take risk. These niggas is <laughs> albums flopping. They moving out the way. Wow. Sometimes artists might get beat up because they <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, man. 
<laughs> but I, I got a question real quick. Um, tell me about developing stages. They really don't have development stages anymore. For me, I, I like to, to develop an artist and to cultivate their sound and find a sound for them. Now it's like, oh, this is hot. This sounds good. And they rush and throw it out there. That's why the life of a rapper is short. I was really talking about, weren't you doing a film? Yeah, is oh, it developing a film. I'm, yeah, because yeah. is, is that what it's called, developing stages? Yeah, yeah I'm in developing stages of a TV series. Oh, a TV series. Yes. Okay, I thought that's what it was called. Yeah. What, I, what is it called? It's called, well, right now we're in between 45 South or PWA, so we're trying to figure out what the name's going to be. Mm. But it's uh, based on my life story. Mm -hmm. It's about a young producer that was on the run and you know going to jail and having the adversity that he's facing. So it's going to be pretty Because I saw the jail cell, yeah. the bars, all Oscar, that. I'm so ecstatic about this. Because you were touched by that scene. I was. I really was. Who's playing you? It's Tago. Tago. Tago that was here that did it. Really? Yeah, really? Got? He's playing me. That's hard. Wow. Yeah, so shout and you out, liked shout him. Out, shout out to young Tago. You, 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 you picked guy. him. Yeah. How was his acting skills, though? They were. He worked on him. He's actually good now. Really? You know I mean, I really believed in him. And I didn't. Once I met him, I didn't want anybody else to play me because he had the same mentality as I had. I remember you said that. And about he looked him. like my son, you know. What <laughs> I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not to sound crazy, but he looked like my kid. So I'm like, man, this got to be God sent for me. So, Did he have to do any classes? Did yeah, you we got him some coaching and okay. different things like that, and he he got out of his shell, and he is phenomenal. And who's filming it? Right now, I got one solid filming it. I'm, I'm in talks with uh, Boomtown. By doing the uh, sizzle reel and stuff like that, so I'm probably gonna team them both together. We have some actors coming in from NCIS. Oh wow! I'm trying to get Bentley Green. If you watch this, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> but, Why uh, him? Because he he has good acting chops. He's been in Snowfall and been in a couple of movies that I've mm -hmm. watched that I liked. Okay, he's a very good actor. Too. So you're gonna be filming in all the different places you went because you you weren't only in Texas. You you traveled around. Yeah, I was so in you're Louisiana gonna, and everything. So right, we're so gonna, gonna go there and film. We we're gonna do the set for the for the sizzle reel, and once we get the budget, we will probably start traveling out to Louisiana and, and doing stuff. How like long that. you think it's gonna take for you before you finish this? I mean, hopefully we, by the end of the year we can have a budget and start filming by the beginning of twenty four. Mm, so you just now starting everything. Yeah. Wow. He really just got on, on the on the camera to see what he looked like and okay doing, doing test shots and stuff like that. He, okay, yeah, because when I saw it on your on your page, I was like, he never mentioned nothing about this. Mm -hmm. Like, what's this? I what got are a lot you of stuff. To? I'm running a lot of Working. stuff. Working. You always going. You always drifting off. You're never in this this box. No, nah, I, I, I refuse to be in that. You know, you got to have different avenues of making money and different legacies to pass. Mm -hmm. If it's only one, then you jeopardizing it being a narrow situation. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? A lot, I do a lot of things that people don't know I do. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, like, if I wanted to use one of your beats <laughs> you back. and get it clear, to, like if it's a sample or something, how, how would I do that? I got to uh, call you. I got your number, so yeah, I can call you. You'd have to call me. But I mean, if it's you, then I ain't going to charge you. No, that's anyway. different. I ain't going to do it, but I'm just saying, but I want to know how the process would be. You'd have to call me or if if the way that most of my contracts are set up, producers, you better listen. The master is owned by the record labels. Okay. So, in my contracts, I own my composition, which which is the music by itself. Mm hmm And the reason I do that is a person. If a person want to sample my beat, not the lyrics of the beat that's on the beat, I'm gonna. They're gonna come to me, and I can clear it because I own the music by itself. Okay. So they don't have to pay these big prices on masters that's owned by record label. They can I like that you made that deal with, with your um, with your label, right? Mm -hmm. I like that deal because then a lot of people, it's everything they have to deal with. Because what people don't understand is when a person sample my track off a master and the record label own it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to sign off on it for my publishing piece mm -hmm. parts of that song. We gotta go through them but too. But the record label's gonna sign off on the master use. And when they sign off on that master, there's funds coming with it. Mm -hmm. So when Drake and them use your beat, they just hollered at you. I'm just thinking about it. that's why I brought When that Drake up. used my beat, I had to sign off and agree to the terms for the publishing. Rap a lot had to approve the use of the master. And if they got fees for the master, 
It went straight to them. Because it had your word, the words in there. But if yeah. he was just using, if it wasn't the lyrics and it was just the beat, then you wouldn't have to do a rap a lot. See, you would only time, have to do it with you. When I did that record, I didn't know anything about the composition, so they owned that too. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have no That's leeway. early on. That's you know, early on. Conversation. But that's, that's negotiating your, your, your terms and knowing what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I know that. So, so I look for it like, okay, this track by itself is mine. Composition well, is all mom, mine. Your master, do whatever you want to do with it. But when it comes to this, that's me. But just for for Drake to use it anyways. Yeah, I, I mean. What you going to say? The, the publishing payments were, were astronomical. So that's right. But nowadays, people are now, especially because everybody's trying to fight for their masters back. Is a case where when um, up and coming artists looking at to sign in record deals, they're like, should they give their masters up or should they fight for their masters in a contract? Be like, man, I ain't gonna give that up. We gonna have to work some other deal. It just depends on where their position is. You know, if you got and how much they need. If you got a strong position and you're hot, then you have a lot of leeway to negotiate. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the lawyer that you have too. Mm. You know, representation is important, but the right representation. I put that in my book too. You can have a lawyer, and a lawyer can negotiate a deal for you, and, and it'd be bad. Mm -hmm. That's you know real. I mean? So, owning something that has no value at the beginning, you kind of have to look at that and understand what you want to do. My take on it would be: Look, you can own the masters after this certain amount of years. The ownership would revert back to me. Yeah. And well, if you don't want to agree to that, then I just stay where I'm at. I'm gonna ask you. This is gonna be our last question. Okay. Uh, um, Nipsey Hussle, if he'd live to now, of course, it's hypothetical. Um, what do you think his career would would have went? It would have, it would have been huge. You know, it, it would have been huge because he started to he was starting to build his momentum as an artist. You know, he's already big as a person. Correct. Give back to his hood and people and, and putting people in situations to learn. That was his purpose. But he was gonna. He was starting to turn back into the music. How did he get a hold of you? I don't know if he I uh, did Lil Kiki's. Uh, it was a record called "Gotta Be a G." I produced with Kiki. He did a mixtape. You produced "Gotta Be a G" yeah. with Birdman on there with him. Yeah, I'm in the video. Damn, <laughs> but you know I interviewed. I acted a fool about this song, man. Thank you for that. I, I produced that, so that's how I met him. And so when, once you met him, how did y'all talk about how y'all was gonna work together? You just, we you didn't. Know. You know, Nip, I barely even seen him when we was in New York. We stayed in the condo together. I, man, that man would come in at three or four o'clock in the morning, and then we'd get in the studio. He'd be in the studio for five or ten minutes, and then he would leave. So I did the Blue Laces record, did the beat and all of that, and uh, I didn't hear nothing. Three months after we left, he recorded it, and that's when we he, we started contacting each other. We we were tight ever since. Wow, that's yeah. crazy because you never would have thought being from Texas and him way nah, in L.A. that nah. that, that got to be God. Ain't no yeah, way that could I mean, come together that's, like that's that. That's just how my music career has been all this time. Wow. But it's so crazy because you said how um, Nipsey with the music, but then when I, I, I don't know a lot about music, but when I think about Nipsey, I think, I, and I saw him before, you know, his passing and stuff like that, is the fact that he was venturing off into more of that humanitarian type of, you know, venture yeah. and almost like he was drifting away from the music. That was his purpose at the beginning. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Gotta ask you the same question about Pimp. You know I'm Pimp C number one fan in the whole world. Like like <laughs> like I rock with his music. I, I was looking the other day because I before Boss Talk, if you really want to know somebody if they're a fan, you can go down I never erase nothing off Instagram. Yeah. You can go down before Boss Talk, two five years ago, you gonna see me Jamming that pimp, you yeah. know, talking that talk, but it's just, just the way it was. And and you gotta realize, I met Heezy in the parking lot when he when pimp first died. Yeah. So it, I wasn't doing nothing. It was look how long ago that was. Yeah, it was a long time. And I wouldn't sell the shirts because he was selling. He was selling. He wasn't selling shirts. He was selling. He was giving selling CDs. I bought a CD from him, and it was like, I was talking about them shirts. I was like, it's some shirts with pimp name on it, and I was like. If pimp name on this shirt, I mean, they getting the proceeds from it. I just thinking like that way back then. Yeah. I didn't want to have something in my store that he wasn't getting paid and compensated right. for. So I was like big on that. And it's funny how things come full circle. He knows that, but other people wouldn't even realize that. Yeah. You think about that for a second. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> it's just being one hundred. Yeah. For so real. so, but but I am just a fan. You know, mm -hmm. I never met him. But what do you think his career would be? This is my last question. Man, if if pimp was alive. Uh, the whole infrastructure of 
Texas music would have shifted a different way. Why because, you say that? Because he, he, you, people use the word gatekeeper real loose. He's a gatekeeper. Wow. He's a person that's going to tell you exactly what he feel, how he feeling it, and why he feeling it. He's going to tell you to your face. Wow. And, I, and, and, and that's something I loved about him, just the fact that he was straight up and yeah. down. Wasn't going to yeah. be no, I'm going to let you know right there. You ain't got to think about it when you leave. You're, right. <laughs> you know what I feel. You, that's that Kevin Gates syndrome. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it take a real person, a real special person, to be able to do those type of things. You know, because yeah. a lot of people don't, don't, don't love enough to tell you blunt how they feel about things. That's real. That's when you really know a person genuine and they really care about you when they can... Put something that's very uncomfortable in your face. Wow, Mr. Lee, uh, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Uh, Instagram is Mr. Lee713. Twitter, Mr. Lee713. Threads. <laughs> Threads is going down. Threads. And get on my YouTube, Mr. Lee on the track. Make sure Man. you follow that YouTube. What do you think about the Threads? I like it. <laughs> it's cool. Better about than it. Twitter? I do. I Why? Oh, day. Why? Because it don't have all the restrictions and all the new blah, 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 that Twitter has. I just, you know I mean? I really contemplating just shutting my Twitter down. I, I, I got to ask you a question now that I thought about it because I haven't asked everybody this. I got to ask this, man. Like, um, when it's all said and done, what do you think, what would you want people to re remember you by? What do you want people to, to do, do one of the things you would want them to say? You know, I asked if a documentary was being done and you couldn't do nothing to input. To, to what, 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 what would you want people to, do in your remembrance just understand that i invested in i risked my whole entire career to solidify artists in texas in houston preferably so i i didn't shift off to other places and ran behind ma other major artists to get my success i rooted it where i was from wow and i stayed there Wow, thank you so much, Mr. Lee. Yes, sir. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out.